it's always exciting to get a package in the mail. And when it comes from Bath, England, it can only mean one thing, the latest addition to our Brooklyn Models collection. So come along as we open this up and see what's inside. We're also going to answer some viewer questions. Let's go. Hi, Crab Cakes. I'm Emil Hanault, and this is Subway. And this is the Big Crab Cake Channel, the channel dedicated to model cars, trains, and villages as one unified hobby. We've got a package to open, but before that, let's get to some viewer mail. In our last video, we looked at a pink tin plate train, and John Long has a question. He said, I wonder how good of a match the pink 400E of the later Lionel Corporation tin plate era would be with these cars. That's a good question. I thought that myself. I'd originally planned to buy the 400E locomotive engine to pull this train. And as it turns out, it's a, it's a perfect match. It's the same paint exactly. I confirmed this with MTH. Who is the maker? Hey. Hi. I confirmed this with MTH, the maker of the paint. How are you doing, Subway? Subway gets her name because she's from Manhattan. And if she looks like a little buddy, it's because they're part of the same family. She's a little bit younger and likes to play. Go ahead, you can go play. We also had a comment from Heidi M. Saying, how cool are these? Would love to see people sitting inside. I agree with you, Heidi. This train, we were looking inside and noticed that the seats have little circles in them that almost looks like a peg would go into it to hold in a, a passenger. So I've been looking to see whether there are some sort of model passengers that fit with these. And if I find them, we're going to get some good, I'm going to guess they would probably be metal, and we'll get them and put them in that train. Our last question is from Espo Enid. The question is, hello, Big Crab Cake. I'm loving all the different trains. Would you be able to also talk about the simplest type of track that are available now? I would love to hear your opinion on the newer options. I have the MTH New York Subway A train, that I've never displayed because the track set up intimidates me. I understand that completely. And I've been through every version of track that there is. And so I absolutely do have an opinion about this. First of all, there's the original tube track. It's basically unchanged in over a hundred years. It's very difficult to put together and it just isn't any fun. It's also a limited range of sizes. Then there's the high-end track for which there is unlimited dimensions flexible tracks so you can make any shape you want, curves of all different sizes and straights of any length and switches. And Car Gargraves uh, is an excellent supplier of those, uh, among others. Um, and they look more realistic. They're also more expensive. I think they probably worth every penny because they conduct the electricity well and they look great. They require more setup because you're going to want to have to put sort of, sort of uh, uh, gravel in them to make it look as though there's a road bed and so your more sophisticated modelers like to use those and it's it's I think it's worth the investment if you're going to do that but for you know everyday sort of usage where you're going to change your layout from time to time or make temporary layouts which is what I do I think there are really only two choices there's rail real tracks by MTH which I do not recommend I had real tracks on a on a layout for a while and I noticed that it was it was twisting even though even though I had it screwed down in all the places it actually was twisting and lifting up off of the um, off of the layout which I thought was unbelievably odd I thought I had done something wrong and I did a little research and found out that was a common problem uh, with MTH rail track so I've stayed away from that and I have just stuck with Lionel fast track it, it's consistent, it's reliable, it looks nice, and it's reasonably priced. Let me show you what that looks like. I have three pieces here. The traditional 10 inch straightaway. You see it has the three rails. It's not a super high end um, conductor. 
it fits together with pins at the end. It could get loose if you're using, if you're taking it apart on and off over and over again. But generally speaking, when you have it uh, fastened down, there's not really a problem with that. Um, and you don't have to finish it with roadbed because it already has this plastic built-in thing. Some people say that because of the emptiness cavities underneath, that it can get a little noisy. I haven't really had a problem with that, but you could always put some felt between your table and this, or some sort of um, uh, you know, thin styrofoam or something like that as a noise deadener if that's a problem. I haven't really noticed that to be a problem. Trains in general are pretty loud. And then there are curves. The curves come in many different sizes from 031 all the way up to 096. I'm not sure if there's any bigger than that, but that's plenty big. The, the biggest trains that are basically made right now uh, in the general manufacturers, the maximum big track curve you're going to need is 072. If you have 072, there's basically nothing you can't run. But the MTH uh, subway, um, New York A train that you're talking about, I believe that runs on anything all the way down to 031. So I would recommend maybe an 036 size track. You can see that these stamp together very easily. They even have a little bit of a click so you know they're good. Very stable and it's that simple. It also comes with other sort of optional pieces. It comes with switches, like wides in the road. It comes with uh, car crossovers, sort of track crossings that just easily snap in. Although you might not have that for a subway, but just in general, Lionel Fast Track, I think, is the simplest, quickest, easiest, most reliable, and probably best value for your dollar. Okay, let's see what's inside. Let me package this up well. I'm not even sure how to open it. Alright, inside is a bunch of packing peanuts and our model. Protective sleeve. This 1955 Dodge is one of eight different cars produced as part of the Brooklyn Models Pink Collection. And when the collection first came out in 2019, Brooklyn Models made a very aggressive campaign, letting everybody know these aren't just for women, they're also for men. Not only that, but that pink is the most masculine color of all. Let's take a look at their ad. <laughs> they may be right about that. And that is what began the Brooklyn Models pink collection. And since then there have been a number of pink cars, all of them beautifully done. This one in particular I chose because I was looking for something to put in my Easter Village. Now this car is just absolutely beautiful. I don't think I'm just going to save it to take out every year for Easter Village. I think this is going to be part of, uh, of our permanent layout. Uh, for one thing, it's an actual uh, livery of a Studebaker from 1955. And even if it wasn't, it's an absolutely beautiful model. And it belongs on our layout as a point of pride. I think that's really going to stand out and draw attention to whatever scene we place it in. This is the 1955 Dodge Coronet four-door sedan in two-tone pink soda. And was produced in May of 2021. The scale is 143 and it measures 131 millimeters, or 5 inches long. It's hand-painted, and there's also a lot of hand-applied details as well. Take a look inside the back window, and you'll see the purse and raincoat compartments on the backs of the seats, and a beautiful 143rd scale umbrella and handbag on the back seat, painted in, of course, pink. It was exciting to find this in the mailbox today, and enjoyed sharing it with you the opening up and, and seeing it for the first time. I can't wait to get this model in my layout. I appreciate you coming by. If you like this video and you'd like to see others like it, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. That's all for now. We'll see you next time on the Big Crab Cake Channel.